Tahiti. Premier of Sierra Australia, the Honorable Lynn Arnold, Consul of Italy, Dr. Francesco Azzarello, Mayor Kensington Norwood, Vincenzina Ciccarello, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the celebrations in honor of the first Italian settler in Adelaide, Mr. Antonio Giannoni in the distant 1839. As the president of the Italian Historical Society, I feel overwhelmed by your enthusiastic presence here today. The erection of a monument to a humble migrant is a tangible proof that we, the Italian community, the sons of Italy live in the world, never let our ancestors slide into oblivion. Millions of people scattered all over five continents can claim an Italian origin. We are very proud of our forefathers. Our culture is a beacon of civilization to the entire globe. Our country of birth or origin enshrines two thirds of the world heritage. At the same time, however, we are also very proud to have chosen Australia as their second mother country, because multiculturalism is a pleasurable reality here. <laughs> the Italian Historical Society of South Australia, spurred by your massive participation to this event, will always endeavor to preserve for the future generations what our fellow countrymen have been doing together with many other ethnic people in order to make Australia a very prosperous nation. Thank you. And now I call on the Mayor of Kensington Norwood, uh, Vincenzina Ciccarello, to say a few words. Grazie Marco. I vorrei leggere qualche cosa uh, in inglese per prima. The ambitions of people who never became very rich, who founded no dynasty or long-lasting company, and who lived in the middle and lower ranks of the business world are very difficult to write about because they are seldom recorded. But the character of a society is greatly influenced by the form the ambitions of such men take and by the extent to which they are satisfied or frustrated. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are here to honour Antonio Giannoni, who was the first Italian settler in South Australia. However, by honouring him, I am hoping that um, we are honouring all migrants who have come not only to South Australia, but to Australia. It's very, very important to recognise the contributions that even simple, humble people have made. And uh, Antonio probably didn't realise what he was going to be doing when he first came to Australia. He did a lot of wonderful things, um, and I'm, I guess, by a, uh, an accident of history, I feel very proud that I've been able to do something here to honour him in Kensington and Norwood. His son became Mayor of Kensington and Norwood, and tonight we have here some of his direct descendants. We had Fred Gunnorny here, who is Antonio's grandson, and we also have Anne Gunnorny, who is his great-granddaughter, and I think it's really wonderful that we have this direct link with someone who arrived here in 1839 and who can demonstrate what a wonderful contribution migrants have made to this country. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the history of the monument that we are going to unveil tonight um, has been very interesting and it's been one of those Italian miracles that people thought was never going to happen. Three weeks ago there wasn't even a plan and uh, we now have uh, a, a very talented young architect, Nick Tridenti, who drew up the plans and uh, he is to be commended for the work that he has done. And I'd also like to commend Brian and Leo Floriani from Constress, who, when they received a phone call from me, willingly agreed to do the work free of charge. And also Rick Lepere from uh, Delaware Brass, uh, who also made part of the monument free of charge. Wandrina Douglas Bruce, who is the artist uh, responsible for the bronze bust, um, has done a wonderful job, which you'll be able to see. And uh, I'm hoping that this monument will not only recognise the contribution the Italian community has made to South Australia, but also all other migrants, because everyone, everyone's contribution is important. 
and we need to remember that. We need to make our young people feel very proud that uh, in coming here and making those great sacrifices that it has been worthwhile. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been wonderful to see you all here and uh, obviously we recognise the significance of this occasion. I'd also like to welcome Renato Capuccio, who is from the Emilia Romagna, well, representing the Minardi team, who is from uh, the Emilia Romagna region. And uh, they, although they've been very busy, they have also wanted to uh, give their support to what is a wonderful, significant event in South Australia. And I'm hoping that by this, people in Italy will see how strongly we feel about our Italian roots and that we will be able to organise perhaps some cultural exchanges and some more important events that uh, again recognise not only Italy but also the Italians here in South Australia. With that ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here and I'd like to now introduce the Premier of South Australia to say a few words. Your Worship, uh, Vincentina Ciccarello, Syndico of Norwood, Greg Crafter, my ministerial uh, colleague, uh, my other ministerial uh, colleagues, Mario Falepa, Bernice uh, Fitzner, Julian Stephanie, Rob Lucas, Chris Pine from the, the Federal Parliament, Dr. Francesco Azzarello, uh, Consul General for Italy, and Dr. Branca, Consul for Italy, and Cavalieri Paolo Nicella, Chair of the South Australian Multicultural and Ethnic Affairs Commission, Marco Danielli, President of the Italian Historical Society, Antonio Cocchiaro, uh, President of Cheech, uh, Mark, uh, Paolo Alamotaris, uh, President of Comites, uh, to my uh, former uh, colleague and my, good, my continuing good friend Don Dunstan, uh, former member for Norwood, Ian Wilson, former member for the Federal Parliament for this area, uh, to Renato Capucci from the Minardi team, to Carabinieri, Signori e Signore, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to be here today on the occasion of the unveiling of the bust of Antonio Giannoni, who uh, represents uh, the, the start of the contribution to the, the culture of South Australia of those of Italian birth and descent. Now, I'm also very pleased that uh, Fred uh, Gannoni and Anne Gannoni are here this evening and other members of the, uh, uh, of the family descendants of Antonio Giannoni are here this evening. Because there has been uh, a mistaken understanding about multiculturalism in South Australia by many people. First of all, there are many people who uh, presumed that the community that existed in South Australia before the coming of overseas settlement was not multicultural. They were in fact quite wrong because the community that existed in South Australia before the first overseas settlement was in fact very multicultural. Those who lived in this country for many tens of thousands of years represented a, a, a diversity of cultures that was in fact as diverse as you would find in any continent of the globe. But when the first overseas settlers came to South Australia, there has been a, a presumption in the rewriting of history that they represented only one culture, or perhaps some minor acknowledgement of the fact that there was a significant German contribution to the early culture of South Australia. Yet what we actually had was a very intense multiculturalism in terms of our population right from the earliest days of settlement. And this is represented by, for example, the settlement here of Antonio Giannoni, the first South Australian recorded of Italian uh, birth. Now, there are many others who came in that decade, in the, 18, or in the decades, in the 1830s and the 1840s. We had the first uh, Greek uh, come to South Australia, George Tramontanus. We had the first Croatian and the first of many other groups of the uh, uh, communities of the world came to South Australia at that time. The great sadness was was that their heritage was not fully able to be recognised and to participate in the Australian culture for many, many decades, indeed well over a century and a half. The true spirit of multiculturalism, in other words, putting aside the concept of, of an us and a them, was not abandoned until uh, starting in the 1960s and then growing in the 1970s and the 1980s. We can take pride in the fact that South Australia is the first state in Australia that has embodied the spirit of multiculturalism in law. And I personally, as the minister responsible for that, take that as one of the great things about which I have pride in my uh, political career. But it is important that we look back to those who came and built South Australia. And while perhaps not appropriately recognised in earlier times, 
Antonio Giannone was one of those who came to build South Australia. He was born in Rimini, and as I say, we have uh, Renato Capuccio here tonight from the Minardi team, and uh, the Minardi team are by and large uh, Riminese as well. So they come from the same region that Antonio Giannone came. He was born in 1814, and his uh, birth records uh, show that, uh, uh, well, in translation they read, the Reverend Giuseppe Rocchi Capelli has baptized the baby born this day at 2.30 p.m. to Pietro, the son of the late Giulio Giannone and Maria Gambuti, parents of the parish of San Martino. He has been given the names of Angelo and Antonio. The godparents were Agostino Tonini and Colomba Pagliarani. Now he came to this country and he was at that stage illiterate. He arrived uh, in this country in uh, 1838. There is no record of uh, uh, his uh, activities before 1838, though we know, of course, that Rimini was involved in a number of activities that were later to lead to the unification of Italy at that time, and he may well have been involved uh, in, in that process. <coughs> he went to sea. He went to sea on the ship called uh, Recovery, and uh, the recovery came uh, with settlers to South Australia to help form this uh, new colony. He was employed by Lieutenant Frome as a labourer in the survey department. And during his time in the survey department, he developed, initially on a modest scale, an interest in land speculation. And later, that was to become one of his successful activities uh, in uh, South Australia. On the 14th of April, 1841, he bought two, box of two blocks of land totaling one and a half acres for 16 pounds in the then newly subdivided village of McGill. Now over the years he went into a series of different occupations and uh, those occupations were later to take him to be called uh, a cab driver, they're not cabs as we know them today, but uh, handsome cabs and also the uh, horse-drawn omnibus vehicle that would be seen on the streets of Adelaide at the time. He was to buy properties in Adelaide particularly in the square mile of Adelaide. He was to do uh, <coughs> very well in all of those occupations. He had uh, three marriages. Tragically, the first two marriages ended with the death of his spouses. The first uh, <coughs> wife, uh, Matilda, died after some four years, and his second wife died in childbirth. Finally, Mary Clapton, his, uh, his, the wife, uh, his third wife, who uh, was to outlive him by some 15 years, bore him five children. And it is uh, from there that the descendants we have in South Australia today. In fact, I note that his first marriage was uh, to Matilda was in the church that I now attend uh, frequently, Holy Trinity Church on North Terrace. His other marriages were in the St. John's Anglican Church in Halifax Street. Now, <clears throat> not only did he contribute to the literal physical building of South Australia, he also had children who contributed to the building of our community, and as I say, their descendants are here today. He was determined that his children should have the opportunity for education and have the opportunity for security that he himself never had. <clears throat> it wasn't until later in his life that he learned even the simple art of writing his own name. And indeed, the records we have suggest that it wasn't until 1857 that he was first able to move from putting a cross for his own name to actually writing his own uh, surname, which was then known as Gononi. Because due to the misunderstanding of many who heard his name, they misrecorded his name on early records. Now we know, uh, uh, the Vincenzo mentioned a few minutes ago, about uh, one of his uh, children, Peter Gononi, who became uh, not only, who was not only given the chance of education, he was given the chance of an apprenticeship. He then went on to be a member of the Kensington and Norwood uh, Council and later became mayor of the, the city of uh, Kensington and Norwood. He was on that council for a period of 37 and a half years over a period of 50 years. He stood as an independent for the position of mayor and won that position by just five votes. I must say that uh, Don Dunstan and Greg Crafter both know the, uh, the capacity to win seats by uh, very tight margins. He held the office for two terms until December 1922. That's Peter Ganoni. Antonio Giannone died, uh, as is recorded, of old age and disease of the bladder on the 6th of September 1883. His son Peter declined to record on his death certificate 
any of the many occupations his father had engaged during his life, but rather he felt it was all summed up by one word. When he wrote on his death, uh, on the form for his death certificate, simply the rank of gentleman. And perhaps there is no finer attribute that can be given to one of the early South Australians who contributed to the building of this community. I have been concerned that we have not sufficiently recognised this multicultural contribution to South Australia. And I note that in uh, another state of Australia, an attempt has been made to provide a literally concrete, tangible way of this to be symbolised. Tonight, we are about to unveil a bust of Antonio Giannone. But I want to say that my government is going to be asking the South Australian Multicultural and Ethnic Affairs Commission to write to all the communities in South Australia to suggest that we build on government land what may be called a wall of South Australians, a multicultural wall, inviting all communities, in other words, all regions of all countries from which South Australians have come, both now and in the past, inviting them to obtain a stone from their particular region that they may contribute that stone to the building of a wall, and that wall can then be built up to reflect the true nature of this community. <clears throat> so that it will be a permanent record to remind South Australians that our great unity, our great strength, is not just born of the recent diversity of our migration from so many countries of the world, it in fact goes back into the very roots of our history. It goes back certainly before overseas settlement, but most certainly from the time, the very first day of overseas settlement to this community. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it is a very great pleasure for me to have been invited here tonight on the occasion of the unveiling of the bust of Antonio Giannone. And if you'll excuse me, I'd like to say a few more words. And for those who understand Italian, I also ask for your apologies for my pronunciation. Mi fa molto piacere inaugurare questo busto in onore di Antonio Giannone. Il suo arrivo preannunzio la grande contribuzione del popolo italiano al sud Australia. Su figlio Pietro Ganoni è stato membro del municipio di Kensington e Norwood per un periodo record di 37 anni e mezzo incluso un periodo da sindaco. La società multiculturale, appoggiato dal mio governo, ha visto questa contribuzione creare un stato di cui possiamo essere tutti orgogliosi. Grazie a tutti. E adesso vorrei invitare il console eh, italiano in Sud Australia, il dottor Francesco Azzarello, a dire due parole. Il eh, dottor Azzarello eh, non solo è il console italiano, ma anche un residente di eh, Kensington e Norwood, quindi è una doppia significanza qui e magari se, se voglio è anche patrono della società storica. Quindi eh, signore e signori, eh, il dottor Francesco Azzarello. Thank you to Antonio Giannoni, thank you to South Australia and thank you to the Italo-South Australian community. I would like to pay a tribute to the city of Kensington Norwood for this historical afternoon. Neither can we forget Dr. Desoconno's studies. Without them, we wouldn't be here. And I will never find the appropriate words to thank Mr. Marco Danieli for his spontaneous and priceless efforts in all directions. And what about Vincenzina Ciccarello? the first lady, Italian-born, to be a mayor in South Australia, brilliantly following the tradition initiated by Antonio Giannoni's son. Looking at the other side of the world, I would like to thank very, very much the city of Rimini, whose generosity has led to this afternoon's historical result and success, in part. I also convey to the Premier of South Australia and the mayor of Kensington Norwood the most sincere regards of the Mayor of Rimini. E vorrei dare adesso a tutti i presenti i saluti più cari del Sindaco e della città di Rimini. Qui va da parte nostra un ringraziamento di cuore per una generosità che è stata determinante nello spingere pochi volenteriosi ed entusiasti 
lungo il non facile cammino che ha portato lo splendido restauro della tomba di Antonio Giannoni e dal bellissimo busto che non senza emozione scopriremo idealmente tutti insieme Rimini e Norwood, l'Italia ed il Sud Australia fra pochi istanti. Ma prima di cedere la parola consentitemi anche di porgervi i saluti del nuovo ambasciatore d'Italia in Australia, Sua Eccellenza Mercello Spatafora, che è arrivato da appena una settimana a Canberra e che mi ha chiesto nel rappresentarlo di porgere i suoi auguri più sinceri di buon lavoro e di serenità in attesa di potervi conoscere personalmente al più presto nel corso di una prima visita ufficiale. Thank you very much.